Alright gang, today's a pretty big day and this is a pretty big video because finally things are about to get a little more interesting, a little more representative of what organic chemistry is because we're doing our very first reaction. So the way things kind of go in OCHEM for most reactions are you learn the reaction mechanism, which is what we're going to do in this video, and then you learn how to do something called predict the product, which is what we're going to do in the next video. I'm going to kind of introduce you to what's called the free radical chain reaction or free radical halogenation and then in the next video I'm going to clarify some concepts, some governing principles I won't talk about here because I'm, I want to kind of be in a different setting and also then we'll learn how to predict the product. Okay, but anyways that's a lot of talking. We do drawing instead of talking so that's much better. Okay, so let me kind of draw something for you. So if we were to take ethane, all right, and I were to do a reaction where I was to introduce ethane to chlorine gas, some Cl2, and then what I'm going to write H nu. It looks like a V. H nu, I don't know if you guys remember this from maybe honors, chemistry, chemistry, physics possibly, but this just means light, right? This is Planck's constant, and this is frequency of light, but that doesn't really matter. All you need to know is that if you write an arrow, Cl2, Hv, with some alkane, or some organic structure, you're going to achieve the following transformation, the following product. You will achieve tacking on a Cl, a halogen, in this reaction. And this will be the very first mechanism we will draw. Alright, so again, some alkane piece, Cl2, light, an arrow, and that's what we'll get. So I'm going to kind of make some space and then I'll show you the mechanism. Okay, so I moved the net reaction over here, and now it's time to draw what's called the mechanism. A mechanism is basically an illustration step by step of how the electrons move in a reaction and shows how the transformation or the overall organic reaction takes place. Okay, so in this particular reaction, there's three distinct steps, or technically four, but you'll see what I mean. So the first step we're gonna deal with is called initiation. And here's all that happens in it. So let's draw our chlorine molecule, Cl2. I'm going to draw on all the electrons for you guys. Okay, so it, the reason why we actually include light is that Cl2, the bond right here is weak enough that if we shine light on chlorine gas, because it's in the gas phase, this bond is going to split. And the way it's going to split is that one electron, right, because there's two electrons in this bond, one electron goes to this chlorine and one electron goes to that chlorine. When we had previously drawn resonance, we were always using a double-headed arrow to move two electrons, right? Well, this mechanism, as per the name, it's a radical mechanism. If you want to move one electron, you use a single-headed arrow. So this is how this looks. When this bond breaks or it cleaves, each chlorine gets one electron. And when, this, when a bond cleaves like this and each atom involved gets one electron, that's called homolytic cleavage. Okay? So then we get one chlorine radical, right? A radical is an atom with one unpaired electron. And we get two of those due to the homolytic cleavage of this bond from the energy light has to break that bond apart. That's initiation. Okay. So now the second step is a step called Propagation 1. Okay, so what we do is we introduce our organic piece to the, to the equation, right? Then we draw one of our chlorine radicals. And I'm actually going to draw the radical electron on this side of the chlorine. What you need to do, in this case we have symmetry, these positions are equivalent, I'm going to draw a CH bond over here. What's going to happen, I'm actually going to move the chlorine over a little bit, what happens is, one, this chlorine is going to grab this electron. He's going to abstract him. That means take him away. So to show the, the forming of this bond of, from hydrogen to chlorine, this Cl is going to take his radical electron and meet hydrogen halfway. Hydrogen is then going to take his electron from this bond and sync up with chlorine. What that leaves us with is the extra, electro, extra electron from this bond, and that's going to go onto this carbon. So he's going to become a radical, right? We're kind of forming a bond here and he's left over as a radical. 
and that looks like this. Plus, we just made HCl, right? Okay, so now we're on to, I'm going to abbreviate this as to P1 for propagation 1. Then we're going to move on to propagation 2. And here's how this goes. We have our radical alkyl piece. We're then going to take another Cl2 molecule. Because when we're doing this reaction, guys, we're in a large vessel room tank of Cl2 gas. There's Cl2 everywhere, all right? So it's all over the place. He's actually going to run into a Cl2 molecule, and he is going to pick this guy off, producing a radical over here. So this is the illustration of this chlorine leaving, breaking this bond, and bonding to the alkyl radical. And then we're going to draw this chlorine becoming a radical in itself. And it doesn't matter where you draw the arrows as long as they meet up where they're supposed to go. So that gives us this haloalkane. Haloalkane meaning it's an alkane with a halogen on it. And very importantly, we produce a chlorine radical. And the reason why that's important is because the name says it's a chain reaction, right? And that means, you know, it just keeps going and going and going and going. And the reason being because we produce this radical that helps start the reaction, right? We need a chlorine radical in the beginning, and we actually make it by doing the reaction. That's why it's a chain reaction. Okay, and the last step is called termination. The easiest part about this is that you're just smushing two radicals into each other. So always, always, always go with just smushing two of these chlorine radicals together, right? There, in actuality, there are radicals running into each other all the time. I just think it's the easiest pair to show because they're small and simple. And how you show that happening is you just show two single-headed arrows hooking up with each other and you get two chlorine radicals. Okay. I have you guys doing this mechanism on the worksheet. It's not hard at all. So I'm actually going to erase all this and I'm going to show you how we can use a different halogen to achieve the same effect of this reaction. Alrighty, so now, if you take a look up in the top right here, no longer are we dealing with Cl2, but now we're going to try this free radical halogenation with bromine, free radical bromination. Okay, so you may have noticed that we, I've now put a triangle here, and for this set of reagents, we, for bromination to occur, we need Br2 light, we're still using light, but we need to add in some heat. And this is what I'm going to kind of get into in the next video. I'm going to kind of leave you guys with a bit of a cliffhanger. Okay, so honestly the mechanism is identical, but I'm just, we're going to go through it together because repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, so in the initiation phase, right, I'm abbreviating them I, propagation 1, propagation 2, and termination, right? So again, same exact thing, right? The BR, BR bond is weak enough that if we flash some good old-fashioned light on it, we're going to split this bond and we're in aka cleave it but homolytically cleave it right because if we give this guy an electron and this bromine an electron the bond splits evenly it splits the same way homolytic cleavage so i'm gonna we have two br radicals right so i'm gonna draw one br but i'm gonna stick a nice little two in front of them all right so now that we've made our radical we're ready to start the chain reaction so now let's move on to propagation one. Introduce your alkyl piece and draw a CH bond. Remember, both the positions are equivalent, so it doesn't matter where I draw it. Then swing your radical over here. All right, we got all those electrons right there. And remember, he's going to abstract this, this hydrogen atom. He's going to pick him off. So let's draw a single-headed arrow going there. Then remember, hydrogen is going to take one of his one of the electron from this bond and meet up with this bromine. So they're going to bond and make HBr. And then we need to illustrate, okay, the leftover electron in this bond is going to go right onto that carbon. So if we're going to draw the result of that electron flow, if that's what you want to call it, we have our ethyl radical, right? Two carbon radical. And then we have HBr. All right. Draw these electrons real quick. All right, propagation two. So then we have our alkyl radical, ethyl radical in this, in this situation. Then, remember, 
we're surrounded by BR2. It's everywhere. So we're going to run into another BR2, BR2 molecule, good old diatomic bromine, fill in these electrons. So remember, he's going to pick off this bromine, leaving this guy as a radical. So I'm going to draw a single-headed arrow going that way. I'm going to split this bond homolytically. These two are going to bond to each other, leaving this poor old bromine to just be all by his lonesome as a radical. So if we draw the result of that electron flow, we have ethyl bromide, right? If we're going to throw it back, throw it back to our common naming, and then that Br radical. And remember why that's important, because this is a chain reaction. So by nature of doing this reaction, we actually produce the very thing that starts it, right? So that's, don't forget that. Some teachers like to kind of add that in, like, oh, why is this a chain reaction? Okay, termination. Remember, the easiest termination step. Take your radical, whatever you're working with, bromine or chlorine, smash those two guys together. Fill in these electrons. Remember, have two single-headed arrows link up with each other. And that is your termination step. Because remember, if there's no radicals left, the reaction will stop. Okay. Very good. Okay. Not a hard mechanism. It's really just practicing it, nailing it down, that sort of thing. Let me erase this real quick, and I'll finish with some, some final thoughts and a little cliffhanger. So if we're going to kind of bring everything together that we talked about in this video, if we have some alkyl piece and we introduce it to Cl2 and light, H nu, right, HV, we get a chlorinated product, right? We, we free radical, free radical chlorinate it, and in this case we get ethyl chloride. Same deal down here, but remember with bromine, we need to add in this triangle for some heat, which I'll talk about in the next video, and we get ethyl bromide. However, if anyone's trying to be sneaky with you and they throw iodine in the mix, this only works to chlorine and bromine. Iodine, the, the reaction is actually endothermic, does not happen. So if anyone ever does that to you, that's a no reaction, NR. Okay, so here's the little cliffhanger I want to dangle in front of you guys, which we'll discuss in the next video. We worked with ethane in this video, right? It was a completely symmetrical molecule. Didn't matter if I put the halogen here or here. However, if I was to give you an asymmetric uh, molecule right here and I gave you Cl2 and light, I'm telling you this would be the major product. This is what we would see if we drew the mechanism. We would stick a chlorine on, this, on a primary carbon, right? Doesn't matter which one because these are all equivalent positions. However, if we were to see what happens when we free radical brominate, right, Br2, light, and we throw some heat in there, I'm going to tell you that virtually 100% of your product is going to be this right here. So remember, over here we have isobutyl chloride, but here, if we brominate, we're going to overwhelmingly see T-butyl bromide. You might be wondering why. Well, we're going to find out.